Hey there. Do you want to know my favorite electroacupuncture treatments to reverse neuropathy? Well, if you want to find out, stick around because in this episode, I'm going to go over the details of a very effective method of diagnosis and treatment and how to best apply it to the field of electroacupuncture, which will unlock unlimited healing potential in your patients. My name is Dr. Jeremy, and I help acupuncturists like you create breakthrough patient results with the world's most cutting edge electroacupuncture techniques. Now, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button now. This way you can receive a notification each time I release a new training episode. Along with each video and blog, I give away a free downloadable training resource. And for this episode, it's called Electroacupuncture for Neuropathy Diagnosis and Treatment Chart. So don't forget to download this. It's below the video or in the details section. This can simplify your life and practice. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, let's talk about a really powerful protocol for peripheral neuropathy. <clears throat> But this similar thing can also work for visceral uh, neuropathy, <clears throat> such as uh, bladder incontinence from diabetic neuropathy. Now, this is a two-part protocol. The first part is called vascular sympathetic uh, neural levels, or vascular autonomic sympathetic neural levels. So basically, a patient comes in peripheral neuropathy, most commonly from blood sugar issues or from diabetes, and the there's too much kind of sugary molecules that are sitting on the nerves. The nerve cells are not healthy. Their conduction is poor. The first thing we want to do is regulate blood flow going to that area. How do we do that? Well, we can use Huato Jajis and create a bracket. <clears throat> and if you want to treat peripheral neuropathy in the hands, elbows, shoulders, anything, if you want to regulate the blood to anywhere going to from, you know, the shoulders and up, including the hands, the arms, the fingers. So in this case, we want to regulate the blood flow going to the hands. We're going to choose T1 to T4. So T1 to T4, right here, and you're going to make a bracket. Now, if you're using ETOs, Pantheons, AWQs, a lower voltage device, you're going to need eight needles for this treatment, and you do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're going to needle all the Watos of T1 through T4. Now, if you have a higher voltage device, just needle two points, the dew channel below T1 and the dew channel below T4. So there is tremendous benefit to using a higher voltage device, but you can use both for now and still get good results. Now I want you to, when you're needling your Watto, stay a thumb's distance between, stay a thumb's distance. Uh, you know, set your thumb in the center, place your left needle on the left side of your thumb, place your right needle on the right side of the thumb. That will be completely safe to avoid the lungs. Now, this is very important. When you do this treatment and you want to regulate blood flow going to the hands, it's 12 minutes or less. You need to set a timer or this isn't going to work. And you're going to use a low frequency, 1 to 5 hertz, and low power. The patient just barely feels it. Okay. Before I go over the bracket for the lower peripheral neuropathy to regulate blood flow going to the feet or anything below the hips, I want to tell you another clue is never treat in prone position. Never treat in face down position. The autonomic nervous system is extremely important for health and especially our work as acupuncturists. Uh, many times, if not always, our patient comes in in sympathetic dominance, and in order for our treatment to work, we need to get them into rest and recovery mode. 
There is a lot of research online demonstrating that when a patient goes prone or face down, that can increase sympathetic dominance in certain patients. It can also put pressure on the low back, making it worse. So no more prone, no more face down treatments if you want the best outcomes. Okay, let me show you the lower bracket here. So this will regulate blood flow to everything going below the hips, basically. So if you want to regulate blood flow to the knees, to the ankles, to the toes, or to the feet, in this case, peripheral neuropathy, uh, we're regulating the vascular tone, the vessel tone, by doing this. So in this case, to regulate the vascular tone going to everything below the hips, basically, you want to use T10, so T10 through L2. Okay, so if you're using an ETO, Pantheon, AWQ, low voltage machine, still use 8 or 10 needles and just blanket it from T10 to L2 on Huatos. If you're using lower voltage machine, I mean higher voltage machine like the EAM point to select or another higher voltage machine, you can get away with two acupoints due channel, one under T10, one under L2. Again, 1 to 5 hertz, low power. Okay, and under 12 minutes and not prone. After this, next, this is a two-part treatment. You have regulated the blood flow going to an area. Next is a more local treatment, and we call it Ba Shea or Ba Fung Prime. So if the peripheral neuropathy is on the feet, first regulate the blood flow. Then you can needle Ba Fung, which is prime, Ba Fung Prime. It's the most proximal. So normal ba fungs right here, we slip the needle as, as far proximal as we can. One, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four. Ba fung, each one gets its own clip, or you can have two handles go to one clip, everything gets electricity. In this case, ba fung or ba xie, you're gonna do 150 hertz for 10 minutes, and then one to five hertz for another 10 minutes. Now this is for a lower voltage machine. If you're using a higher voltage machine, you're just gonna use the frequency resonance blanketing effect and you're not gonna be so concerned about which frequency you choose for this. Now, same with the hand, same thing. We, we treat Bache on the hand. Let me show you that. It's Again, it's the most proximal it's the most proximal version. So where you can slip your needle, right around here, right around here, here, here. Now one thing you should know is that when neuropathy, from healthy to neuropathy, it turns first to pain, even if uh, you know it's only for an hour or a day or the patient forgot, and then it goes to numbness. And when you're treating this, you'll find it'll back its way out, meaning it'll go from numbness first into pain. You have to encourage your patient is a good sign, and then back into normal feeling. Now, how long can this take? Well, it depends on every patient, how many times a week you're treating them. This is a, if this is a severe patient, I recommend three times a week for the first month, twice a week for the second month. Uh, and they should be starting to see massive results soon after that. Take into account how long it takes for the peripheral nerves to regenerate, and then also take into account uh, that hopefully they're eating enough fats because the nervous system is made up greater than 50% fats, so we want to be sure the patient's eating plenty of fats so that um, you know the cells can regenerate. Besides that, that's it. Go out there and try it. Super effective. I've used it for many, many years. Uh, it works really good. So what do you think? Feel free to place your comments or questions below. Now remember, I created this great downloadable resource and the link will be in the description area. Be sure to grab that. Now I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, click the like button. And if you have any colleagues that would benefit from this information, feel free to share the link with them. And for further information regarding my classes, you can visit www.electro-acupunturemedicine.com. 
And if you want more details on the EAM Special Edition Pointo Select, click the link near this video. I'll see you next time.